Well, this is going to be interesting for me. And thank you for joining me very much. I hope it will also be interesting for you because I'm going to go with some new media, pumice and perlite. And the reason I'm doing that is because Miltonia Sunset doesn't want to dry out, doesn't want to be too wet. And once it's strong enough, big enough, mature enough, I think it can live outside in my climate here in southern Spain all year round, where my temperatures can drop to five degrees Celsius. On occasions we get four, like we did this past winter, which was nasty. But this is a cool, well, let's say intermediate grower. Let's, let's go with intermediate. And personally, I've never wanted something with milt in the name in my collection. And because of the fact that my summers can get super, super hot, and I didn't want to struggle with something for the majority part of the year, and then have an easy going time trying to recover it <laughs> during the cooler parts of the year. So by the time it starts to recover, it'll go downhill again because now it is hot again. So I was never really into anything Miltonia, Miltoniopsis, anything like that. And okay, receive this in the right way. We get Miltonia sunset so often and so regular in the garden centers here it's almost considered common, and I just wasn't taken by it. I had other shiny things I was looking at to spend my money on. And that's not fair because a lot of people I know struggle finding Miltonia Sunset. And I'm like, well, le snob over here thinking <clears throat> I'm not going for it because it's common. Well, in that case, I then decided I changed my mind but the only reason I changed my mind and really, really thought, okay, enough already, was because I saw this one in my garden center four weeks ago or something like that. And I thought, oh, well, there's another one. That's pretty, thought of Michael McCarthy and walked away because, you know, what I just explained, not that into it. And then uh, the other day I was back at my garden center. No, I still don't have my pots in case you're wondering. That was a no-go. We had a nice walk, my puppy and I, but came home only with the Miltonia sunset. Anyway, and she was still there. And that kind of surprised me because normally you see a pretty bloom. My gosh, they are gorgeous. And there's no way around it. You see that in a garden center and people would just buy it and then, you know, either keep it going or <laughs> kill it. <laughs> but. Yeah, and then I thought of Michael McCarthy again, and then I thought, don't be like that. And it was only nine euros. So I thought, well, here we go. I was very, very proud of myself when I walked to the cash register that I had jumped over my own shadow in getting this Miltonia, instead of being stubborn saying, no, you're not that into it, so don't get it. No, I'm actually quite proud of myself. And you know something? I might actually really, really get to enjoy this little orchid a lot more than I would have ever thought possible. Because the past days that she's been acclimatizing to my space in the blooming alley, I've actually really enjoyed this real stunning bright pop of yellow. It's, it's really quite something else in real life. And these blooms are tired, so imagine, well, I'm imagining, that if I can get her through to the next blooming cycle, what the blooms will look like then. And I'll already make a bet right now to say, um, I should have gotten one a long time ago. <laughs> as you do, as you do. Sometimes, sometimes just your own stubbornness, or well, at least in my case, it holds me back from something that is just an asset. It's a good thing something that is common, it doesn't necessarily mean, there's a reason why it's common, right? So many people have one, there's a reason for that. So why was I, you know, putting the brakes on and yeah, not into it. Oh well. So you see the, the roots here. I've, I've been very, very gentle. Anything with milt in it, very sensitive roots. And I, 
I'm trying to see, you know, what's dead and what's alive. The reason I'm repotting now is because it's still warm. And this new growth right here, this is going to be nasty. No, wait. I'm going to clean her up first, clean my hands, and then I'll show you. Much, much better. Prefer it that way. I'll be right back. That's better. <laughs> oh, gosh. That was a close call. I was about to zoom in on you nasty hands. Can't be done with that. Right. The reason I'm potting her up now is that this new growth of hers is already quite advanced. And there's signs of new roots coming and branching of the old root system. And I want to take advantage of that now instead of trying to baby her with the inorganic media she came in. I'm not going to touch it, but it wasn't bad. It was, you saw how easy it came off the roots. It was seedling bark. And I was very impressed with that. There was a teeny tiny bit of sphagnum moss right in the center, but oh, nothing, nothing that would actually call for any issues. Very, very impressed. I looked up the uh, ID number on the interwebs, but I, could, I only found the wholesaler. I thought maybe this could be an Inca orchid product, but it didn't track back that far. All right. Another reason Milt, Miltonias, Miltoniopsis wouldn't come into my collections because of my setup. I don't mount them, they're in a pot. And very often they are climbers. And that is a headache for pot growing oncidium types. Been very, very reluctant to get myself into this, but we have ways and options to make this work. And I'm going to be taking off this little back bulb right here. So that already gives me an option. That's the little seedling bulb that doesn't have anything to do with anything anymore. And then I'm left with three somewhat okay ones. You can see here something has been chewed or just ripped off unceremoniously, which is a shame, but hey, you know, those days of abuse are over. She doesn't have to deal with that anymore. Another thing I'm going to do is, even though I have not seen any snails during the time that she's already been with me, I'm going to spray with hydrogen peroxide as a precaution around the base. Because when I first saw her, she was nice and moist and everything was beautifully hydrated. You could see she had just arrived. And then four weeks later, when I came and saw her and brought her home, Everything was bone dry. It was just awful, awful. And I, uh, yeah, and I just felt bad and I thought, come on, get over yourself. Get yourself a Miltonia sunset into your collection. And that is why now I am spraying because yes, she's been nice and wet while she's been here soaking in CalMag and seaweed. I didn't see any cretons coming out through the crevices. But that doesn't mean that the eggs aren't in there and they're, they're just waiting for that more humid time period to hatch. So I'm not gonna be overconfident and just let it go and say, well, I don't see snails. <laughs> I just don't wanna see any in the future either, given the circumstances of her dry conditions for four weeks. And now the eggs have maybe plumped up and are starting to hatch again. Well, no, that's not happening. So we're gonna be generous with the hydrogen peroxide. Got plenty of that stuff. It's the alcohol that I need more of. <laughs> and then we're just going to let her do her little fizz and bubble and all that business. And I'll also be right back with a clean working surface. Right, so let's have a look-see. I don't plan to go into this little orchid here its root system and do a mass touching of every single root. They all feel firm, but then they do start to break apart and look stringy. So I'm going to go with a random, let's just say gamble, that usually the roots in the back are old and tired. That's the gamble I'm going to go with. And then before you get all radical, you see this, the branching and possibly the start of something new. And then I'm going to back off on that thought process and just go with what I see. But I'm not doing every single individual root. 
So I'm just going to look a little bit more, just a, just a tad, give it a little bit more of a thought and a good look-see. And maybe I'll just take off what I can see on the oldest root in the back here. This is a vigorous little root system and I'm expecting it to return as such. So we'll just leave what we can identify as fresh. Take out a little bit more because I'm also thinking of the aeration in the pot for the next year or two. And I'm thinking hopefully two years being a climber. Now we've got that to contend with. And then this part here that is uber long, if it is still viable, I'm going to just chop it off unceremoniously right down the middle, give it a little haircut, giving me some more air in the pot even. And then we are going to discuss why I am choosing the media that I'm choosing, apart from the fact I would like to try it out. So this is all I'm going to do with it. Maybe we can bend these roots down and get them into the pot. That's it. If there are some dead ones in there, well, hey ho, so be it. It is going into full inorganic media. So it's not going to go all acidic and nasty on me in the pot. Right, let's discuss the media. Miltoniopsis like to be continuously wet, not overly sopping, and definitely they don't like to dry out. They like a lot of humidity. I don't have that in my climate. Well, very rarely do I have the humidity that they want. So I need something that's going to hold on to water, allow for a lot of airflow, but also allow for a lot of humidity to counteract my dry climate. For that reason, I've got pumice, this is a medium pumice, like a one centimeter size. And I've got small perlite, already flushed through, gotten all the powder out. None of them really, really sink to the bottom of the pot. <laughs> As you can see, we've got a half and half thing going on here. Some have sunk, some haven't. And all I did was clean up both of these medias just by flushing them through, my pumice has been soaking overnight in a closed container with water to the brim because I knew I wanted to do this project today. And still, it's half float, half sink. So I'm going to combine the two. I've got a high level of wicking and water retention and a high level of aeration plus humidity provider here with my perlite. And I'm gonna combine these two. I could also go with very, very small lecker, which I still have, but I don't want to be buying in another new bag of lecker and then have to sort through that again. I think I'm pretty much done with my lecker requirements for this season, so I don't want to be storing too much over the winter. And then I rummaged through my entire stock and supply of my orchids, and lo and behold, in 2018, I happened to buy pumice and I had completely forgotten about it. So I want to say thank you to Frank for the reminder. There was something in the back of my head. I'm thinking, I think I have some. And then we looked for it. Anyway, long story short, let's potter up and see how these two combine. And I cannot do the float method today, unfortunately, because we're not gonna go anywhere fast. <laughs> Here's my container of pumice submerged in RO water from overnight. So I'm gonna take it out of there because it's much easier as opposed to me trying to fiddle around with the floaty half, not floaty thing over there. Let's get the support in. And same as with the Lekka, in goes the pumice. I found this pumice to be super, you know, there was a powder residue on it. So that's why I flushed it through. And it's going to continue releasing a little bit of powder here and there, but without the flushing and cleaning it up first, the pot would be so dirty for such a long time, and that's what I want to avoid. So I've got my bottom layer of pumice, and now what the plan is to intersperse it with perlite, which will close some of the air gaps around the roots, hopefully that will grow, increase the humidity, and also give me the opportunity to not make a mistake with regards to how quickly or how slowly I can keep up with the watering. And this looks like I'm going to really smush the base of the orchid into the pot. 
because I don't want anything climbing out at this stage. I don't want to potter at an angle either. These roots are firm. They're not breaking easily. And for that reason, we're just gonna do it like the squid style and just really push those roots down and put all the perlite, the immediate water source, oxygen source, right around that root bowl so that there's no mistake as to where the roots are supposed to go and where the humidity source will be for anything that is coming out fresh and new. So right here then, the rest of it, I'm going to fill up with pumice. So you see, when you have a root system that is pretty sturdy and you can see that new roots are coming, you can do the really, like flatten it out, like a navari of a bonsai. Flatten it out, put the media on top. And basically, I wouldn't need to stake her at this point in time, but I don't know how she's now going to react to what I just did to her. And if she decides to object, then she's going to shrivel up the pseudobulbs a little bit here and there, and then she might become wobbly. And I don't want that. So what we're going to do is actually tie a support around her just to give her more stability in the pot. This might be totally unnecessary. That would be great on an update to be able to say, well, didn't need that, it worked a treat. But assuming is not knowing. And that is why I will support her additionally with a little bit of wire just around the top, not squeezing tight, not squeezing the life out of the orchid right at the top there, but definitely giving her something to hold on to while there's still some flow going through between her cells. <laughs> because this orchid now is going to live outside with me. I only have 24 degrees today. If let's say tomorrow it switches and gets to 40 degrees, then whoa, then she goes inside straight away because of her intermediate growth habit and all the humidity nonsense that she enjoys so much. I believe that my climate in my pot is going to give her just that. I've put the tag in the back and I've also not put any media in the back, apart from whatever fell of its own accord. So these bulbs back here are actually very deep in the pot, but not touching media. Eventually on the repot, the cleanup for next year, maybe, if that's what we need to do, then I can remove the back bulbs and settle her in again. One last little piece of the puzzle, let's flush her through. Plain RO water because of the use of hydrogen peroxide. Anything beyond that, or it would burn the roots at this point in time. And she is going to stay wet but she is now going to get just plain RO water in her reservoir because I've done all the prep work with regards to pumping her up prior to this repot the past couple of days. Lots of calcium and magnesium and also taking in consideration that she was in bark. So here is my Miltonia sunset. My goodness, I can't believe that I'm saying this. And the reasonings behind why I'm using pumice and perlite in this case. You can use small lecker, absolutely no problem. But in my case, I have reasons for not using the small lecker I have left. And I have my reasons for using pumice and perlite to make sure that I don't ever let her dry out and that she has enough humidity and aeration in the pot and also fill in the gaps between the roots. We shall see. I can't believe it. <laughs> and why didn't I cut the spike off? Well, she's pretty. She's not desiccating. I don't see any stress in this orchid, apart from the fact that she could really do with some good water now, and she'll bounce back. If she didn't like anything I did today, she'll just drop the blooms and absorb the spike. There's no need for me to cut it off at this point. Her new growth is already so far advanced. Those roots are gonna come out very, very soon. Really appreciate your time. 
thank you so very much for watching. And I wonder what your thoughts are about what I'm doing with the two separate medias that I'm combining in this setup. Let me know what you think. Always excited to hear your point of view. And even if you maybe never done this before, it's always exciting to see if something that I've done today resonates with you. So appreciate your time. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Please stay safe and take care. Bye.